This is part 34 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to detect and react when component input property value changes. This is continuation to part 33, so please watch part 33 before proceeding. In our previous video, we discussed component input properties. We typically use input properties to pass data from the parent component to a child component. And to create an input property, all we do is simply decorate that corresponding property with at input decorator. In this video, we will discuss how to detect and react when a component input property value changes. There are two common ways to do this. We can either use a property setter or ng on changes lifecycle hook. If you are new to lifecycle hooks, we discuss them in detail in part 24 of Angular 2 tutorial. I'll include the link for this course in the description of this video if you want to check them out. Now, to better understand property setter and ng on changes lifecycle hook, I'm going to modify this list employees page. Now, what I'm going to do is instead of displaying all these three employees, we will display one employee at a time and then at the top right here, we'll display a button view next employee. Now when we click that button, we are going to cycle through the list of all available employees displaying one employee at a time. This is our parent component which is list employees component. At the moment, we are in the view template and notice here we are looping over this employees property and this property is in the component class which is an array of employees. So in the view template of our parent component, we are looping over that array and passing each employee to the child component using its input property. And the child component is responsible for displaying employee. And that's how we see the list of all employees that we have. Now what we want to do is instead of displaying all the employees, we just want to display one employee. So I'm going to keep this HTML commented for now because we are going to need it later. Now what we want to do is display the first employee that we have in this employees array. So for that, let's use the child component selector that we have right here. So let's make a copy of this one. And then we want to bind to the input property. But we want to display the first employee that we have in this array. So let's copy the name of the property which is employees. And we want the first element within that array. Notice now on the list page we have just one employee displayed. Now just above this employee we want to include a button view next employee. So just above this child component directive let's include a button. Let's bind to its click event handler. When we click the button we want to call this method next employee. We don't have this method yet. We'll create that in just a bit. Let's also use two of the bootstrap button classes to style this button, I'm going to use btn and btn-primary. And the text on the button is going to say view next employee. And between the button and the child component directive, let's include two HTML break elements for some spacing. Now let's create this method next employee within the component class. This method is not going to return anything, so the return type is void. Now I'm going to create another property. I'm going to name this employee to display. The type of this is going to be employee. And in ng on init, I'm going to initialize this new property, employee to display, with the first element that we have in our employees array. And then we are going to bind to this property within our view template. So instead of binding directly to the first element within the employees array, I'm going to use that property which we have just created, employee to display. Now if we take a look at our employee service which is providing the list of employees, at the moment within the service we have got our three employees. So within the employees property, in our component class, we have a maximum of three employees. And on the page, we are already displaying the employee at index position zero. Now what I'm going to do is to keep track of which employee we are displaying, I'm also going to create a private field here. And let's name this 
array index and I'm going to initialize this to 1 and then within our next employee method we are going to check the value of this array index. So if the array index is less than or equal to 2 then we are going to change the employee that we have in the property employee to display. Remember this is the property to which our view template is binding to. Now at the moment we are already displaying the employee at index position 0 and notice we have initialized this private field to 1. When we click view next employee button this method is called and since we are already displaying employee at index position 0 we need to move to display the employee at index position 1 and that's what this line of code is doing. And then we need to increment the value that we have in the array index private field. Now if the array index is not less than or equal to 2 that means we have reached the end of the array so we should start again displaying employee at index position 0. So this dot employee to display equals this dot employees of 0. So retrieve the employee at index position 0 and assign that as the value for this property employee to display and then set the array index to 1. Let's save all our changes and then take a quick look at the browser. Notice now when we click this view next employee button the employee that is displayed changes. Now keep in mind it is the child component that actually displays the employee details. The parent component passes the employee to display to the child component using its input property. So if we take a look at this list employee component view template which is our parent component within this component we have the child component selector used as a directive and the parent component is passing the employee to display to this child component using this employee input property so every time we click this button that input property value is changing so when the input property value changes we want to detect that change and react let's say for example every time the employee that is displayed changes what we want to do is log to the browser console the name of the previous employee and the name of the current employee so every time we click this view next employee button we want to display the name of the previous employee and the name of the current employee here let's see how to achieve this as discussed at the beginning of this video there are two ways to do this we can either use a property setter or ng on changes lifecycle hook. First, let's take a look at this ng on changes lifecycle hook. So let's open our child component TypeScript file, and that file is right here. Display employee.component.ts. We need to import on changes lifecycle hook interface from Angular Core, and let's also make this class implement that interface. Now we need to provide implementation for this interface method and that method is ng on changes. So this method is called every time an input property of this component changes and the changes to the input property are passed into this method as a parameter. Now let's name that parameter changes. You can give it any name you want. I'm going to name it changes and there is a type as well for this parameter and that type is simple changes and it's available in angular core so let's go ahead and import that and specify that as the type for our parameter now let's simply log this simple changes object to the console and see what we get notice now in the browser console we have our input property value changes logged Notice the name of the property is employee and its type is simple change. And when we expand this, notice we have these properties, previous value and current value. And this is the first change. So this property is set to true. Now to start with, we don't have anything within this input property. So the previous value is undefined, whereas current value is an object. And when we expand that, Notice we have an employee object here and at the moment we are looking at employee mark. Notice the name right here, mark. That's our current value. Previous value is undefined. Now when we click this view next employee button, 
the input property value is going to change from Mark to some other employee. So when I click that, notice it changed from Mark to Mary. So now if we take a look at the input property right here, notice the previous value is an object and if we expand that, previous value is Mark and the current value is Mary. So every time we click this button, we get the change logged to the browser console. Now, instead of logging the entire simple changes object to the browser console, we want to log the previous employee name and current employee name. And here is the code that can do that. Now, this code is pretty straightforward. All we are doing here is using the properties provided by this simple changes object. We know on the simple changes object, we have got this key employee because remember our input property name is employee and on that we have these two properties previous value and current value which gives us access to the previous employee and current employee so in both these properties the object that we have is of type employee so we are type casting the value to employee type and storing in these two constants now remember the previous employee can be null the first time so we are checking if it is null. If it is null, then we are logging null to the console. Otherwise, we are logging the name of the employee. Whereas our current employee cannot be null, so we are not checking for null. And we are logging the name of the current employee. So let's save our changes and then take one final look at the browser. Notice now we have just the previous employee name and current employee name. Since this is the first time the input property value has changed, the previous value is null and the current employee name is Mark. When we click this button, the values change accordingly. So, we have just seen how to use the ng on changes lifecycle hook to detect and react to input property value changes. In our next video, we'll discuss how to do exactly the same thing but using a property setter. Thank you for watching and have a great day.